to uh, episode of the steampunks. Look at us, recording stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes listen to punk. Do you think you can do Liberty Sprites with like curly hair, but they'll be like Liberty Sproings going like? I back? really, really hate you. I just, I was wondering. It's a, it's a genuine question. It's an actual concern of mine. <sighs> but. We're playing the beginner's guide. Guide to the beginners Brought of the guide. Brought to you guide. by the same people that did the Stanley Parable. And apparently, if you haven't played the Stanley Parable, this game won't make a whole lot of sense because it's pretty much what the creator feels when he's making video games. So I don't know. I think you can, it's apparently this is supposed to be. The I think it would make more creator. sense because it gives it more context. But I feel like it's still like a random experience. It's oh, not yeah. gonna make they a whole lot of it, fucking it, sense. It helps if you've played it. Because mm -hmm. it's made by the same dude, so we're pretty much going to his mind about how he makes video games. All right, so let's um, get this adventure. This is mostly narration based. So we'll on the just, way. We'll, we'll be quiet for it. Please make sure. Well, yeah. Is it working? Yeah. Yeah, it's working. Audio. Hearing stuff. Does that mean it's on? You are you hearing birds chirp? Yeah, I'm hearing stuff. Yeah. I hope so. Hi there. Thank oh, you very hello. much for playing the Beginner's Guide. You're welcome. My name is Davey Reedon. Hi. I wrote The Stanley Parable. Oh, and nice while guy. that game tells a pretty absurd story... Yes, it does. Today, I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. A series of Do unfortunate up. events. We're going hey, to look you. at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's oh, a level oh, what for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, oh, mostly it's just cool. Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But that what I like is that even though he starts Dude, from this the is for the original Counter-Strike. He then scatters these right, colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating For original crates around the level. This is pretty good. And of course, it destroys the oh, illusion great. that this actually is a desert town. Okay, that's and bad. And instead, this oh, level that black up there. a kind of calling yeah, card from its creator. It's like a reminder that saying. this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all uh, going to give us access to their uh, creator. Okay, some uh -oh's to were, were had themselves. here. I want to get to know like who that. this human being really is. But this was like... And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. His first, what? his first so, attempt at making anything. I haven't made anything, so... Coda starts making judge, these games, you know? and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them oh. onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately just abandons them the and they sit on his is? computer forever. Based on the game. And I think it's he really understood this image of himself like... as a recluse. Uh, I think at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. Uh, so, you know, this was just He's how he depressed. worked. He tended to crank them out <laughs> like, one after the other. Essentially, he really creates games like we play games. You know, we buy a game, made. we play it for like two Until hours and then just never play it again. just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He Sad. made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. Sad. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. Super cool. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d a v e y w r e d e n at gmail.com. Wow. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Wow. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Oh. Huh. Oh. Whisper machine active. Oh god! Oh fuck! Let's go! Ah, fuck! I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna go down this one. This game is oh, called Escape wrong side. from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Uh, you shoot? Yes, I can. Can I crouch? I can crouch. So 
he's got those things. Now. Security call breached. Hostile alien life forms inbound. No, no, don't make them hostile. Huh. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. Oh. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere. But then clearly there are no oh, enemies anyway. I'm out of bullets. You can't even reload the gun when you run yep. out of bullets. <laughs> yep. But ultimately uh, we don't we really fucked know. It. Maybe Coda we thought that it. actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think yeah. that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. That's fair. Enemy force neutralized. Begin shoot evacuation. I don't know, maybe he just did it as a concept to see if he could do it, you know? I yeah. love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> That's great. That's a lot of work. But like, this probably took this guy a lot of time. You know what I mean? Oh God. Okay, that. Apparently, the space station has a labyrinth on it. Yeah. I, sure. I don't know. Sure. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern. So, oh, in the, the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Oh, okay. I, w I was like, what the f- this is gonna be- okay. This is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine, and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Okay. Okay. Hey! Sorry. You there, in the engine room. Me? You could save us all. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you- your body could stop Yeah, you you're telling me to kill myself. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives. Yeah. Would you do it? Could you give yourself? This is the point in Fallout 3 where you're like, "Hey Fox, why don't you uh yeah. why don't you just march on in there?" It's yeah. like, no, "No, you're a dick." And I was just like, "But but radiation is like, yeah, but you're a dick." Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, "Oh, fuck." Let me pause here for a second. Uh, that's interesting. What I'm you dead. just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Oh, Shigar Khan! Oh. 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 Oh, I don't think that's intended. Nope. Oh, there's a labyrinth. Oh. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, it's but neat. Coda identifies yeah. something human about it. Yeah. Like how small it makes you feel mm -hmm. in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place the juxtaposed chariot? against all of the hysteria the that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, Divide. but what's clear is that after making this, apart, something lodges itself in his brain. Mm -hmm. He wants to do more of these really I mean, you can take meaning from experimental it. designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. I'm down for an adventure. It's still November, though. He down the clown. And deer. Are you keeping try time, or are you just gonna eyeball this this I mean, we can just eyeball it. Hasn't felt like fifteen. Don't move. What? Oh, the passive behind her. I get it. Not make me laugh, but I, I get, it. get it. So try walking cool. backwards. You can oh. only walk. In this game, you can backwards. only walk backwards. That's interesting. Dude, no wonder this guy was like, you you should keep doing your thing. Yeah, because this is creative as hell. Well, I mean, it's not, obviously, it's not the most innovative thing. Oh. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining still, motion and narrative. It's super neat. It is less advanced than oh. the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, oh, wow. more so, like, complete. Every time you turn Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on So at first it I was like, oh, so trope. this guy was just kind of like, oh, he's my friend. It becomes clear. So... At first I was like, okay, so this guy's just kind of being, um... Nice to his friend. Not nice, but he's, uh, what's the... Uh, whenever you, you're, uh, remin or reminiscing. Yeah. So he's being reminiscent about his friends, like, this stuff was neat, but, like, this stuff actually is neat and, like, deeper than I thought and, like, kind of interesting. But if the future's always yeah. behind her... How will she find the strength? It's very strange. The text isn't there when you initially. You confront it. 
Okay, so it's I'm a good. short little thought. It says what it wants That's to say, cool. and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. They're like art, they're like almost interactive art pieces that are actual interactive art pieces, not the like okay, you show up and I, I hit you in the face with like fake poo and I'm like it's interactive uh, art. Oh, what the fuck? Poop? Yes. Oh, oh no. no. I do not like this. Oh god. You are now entering the forbidden zone. The of forbidden zone, Doctor Zayas. Oh. The Twilight Zone, the and Danger Zone! Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise oh. you'll see what makes it interesting. Oh, we're in the uh, I have now. my, my interest peaked. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Oh, oh well, I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Uh, that seems like a very art, artsy, artistic thing to do, though. Oh, God. Did you get harder? Yep. Oh. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Huh. I got this. Yeah. Nope. I got it. I, I mean, We're doing this. Okay. Full commitment. I mean, this is going to be a 30-minute episode. <laughs> there we yeah, go. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite have the patience for that. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that was watching this, is he's like, is, it, is he really yeah. going to? No. I, I'm never going to. Oh. 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 In a normal game where you have to scream in the mic every 15 seconds, a pair of floating eyes emit footstep so noises. All of his ideas. You are a, a gate. A room that's warm. Press and U to nice surrender. And filled Read with little ideas. Enemies for emails games. to learn to beat them. That's kind of neat. Sharks are trying to eat you simultaneously. You're trying to eat the sharks. Then ought to be that guy. Koda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. That, like, he said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, right but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow there, climb to get there. Just, you just can't make it top, yeah. It's a uh, self-fulfilling prophecy or... Stranger appears, you run a shop inside your own body. Oh, I wanted to read that! I know, you're a shop inside good. your own body. We can go back and pause it though. Yeah, but Which I'm sure I hate do. the sound of my own voice. I really, I, I can't stand it. You hate it. the sound of your own voice. People have to listen to you. I know, time. and that's why I never have to listen to this. So thank God I'm me, you know? I never have to you listen to hear, me. You never hear, you hear yourself. No, because technically, you only hear what it sounds like. But you're never actually going to hear what anybody else hears when they, when they listen to you. Because you actually don't hear your voice. You hear it reverberating back to your own ears. Well, this is new for Coda. Yeah. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. This is gonna kill me. It looks like it's gonna kill you. Okay. So, what? How is this a puzzle? puzzle? Oh, uh, pull the lever and run through the door. Hey. Oh, I'll pull that. Don't forget that hey, solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. Wow. We're gonna see it a lot. We're gonna see it a lot. That puzzle. So three dots. Three dots. I see that. So don't forget three dots. Can do that much. Okay. Three dots on a wall. Hit me. Hit me. What's next? Close the door now. So that seems Not to be it, right. You nope. walk down a corridor. Three dots. You solve a puzzle. You get to the end. One. Simple enough. Two. All right. Now I'm going Three. to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Oh, whoa, okay. Whoa. Holy fuck. Wow. Those are all rooms. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. Dear God. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. Yeah. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. This Either way, I think cool. that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. 
or even that you're missing anything. This That's is really conveying role video role games as an art, and I love that. So if your role here is not to understand, you know, then what is it? It's just crazy to think that he makes a good point too, because you find those people that get console games that get them on PC, and then they just do no clip, and you find all these hidden areas and all these events that were supposed to happen that never did, but you yeah. never learn the backs. You know, actually. So, like, that stuff, like, that alone is interesting, just being, like, unrevealed depth in, in games, but that just showcases how this whole thing so far, and we haven't even been playing that long, oh, no. just showcases just how video games as a medium for art is completely un underdeveloped. Not underdeveloped, but maybe underutilized or underappreciated. Uh -huh. So, this... Combined so I really hope with the entering that game this earlier, may, you know, tells us that Coda expand people's ideas on video games. Somehow. What they are, it could what even they can be, be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. Oh. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Great and lovely descent. Great and lovely decent. Wow. That video games. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, is this, uh. Let's talk about video game later. development for a second. I guess. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, yep. which determines what the game can and cannot do. Yep. yep. So, in other words, the engine is Great a set of tools full. for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, oh. Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain yeah. things that it does poorly. <laughs> yes. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine oh. does well. Oh, oh I missed! Oh, the no. tools available to the creator Barrier. shape what kinds of creative Barrier. work they're going to end up making. Oh. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear boxy corridors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he stresses out a lot. You can see the, oh, it's he made you the, can see the invisible wall. wall. Yeah, he made the stand the barrel wall in that, and that was yeah. linear boxy corridors. It's because, like I said, Source is really good at, at that kind of stuff, but that's why Source 2 was really going to open up a lot of doors for people. Like that door just opened up. Ha-ha! <laughs> Alright, well, I think we should probably end the episode here because, yeah, definitely end the episode here because this is getting weird. It's getting so weird. We but. Getting weird. As Looks like a slaughterhouse yeah, or something. As we're about to go through this prison, which it prism. clearly is, that is a slaughterhouse. It's a prism. Um, we'll get we'll get you guys up to speed on what happens next. Prism. Uh, Steampunk. Steampunks. 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 Steampunks.